verses 22 through 40. And when the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, you have promised, for now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for the revelation of the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother marveled about what was said about him. And then Simon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old, and she had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child whom all were looking forward to, to the rejection of Jerusalem. And when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee in their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. May God have his blessing to his holy word. In his book, The Life Doesn't Turn Out Like a Plan, author Bill Butterworth tells the story of a Christmas service he attended after a very painful divorce. He walked into the sanctuary that Sunday morning. His mind wasn't on the service, but on the matters at hand. Who would have the kids during Christmas? That Christmas that they had enjoyed, that many good times and many good years together. Maybe it could still be salvaged. Maybe the kids could have a few good memories of that first Christmas when mom and dad went together. As he looked into the sanctuary, it was a lot like ours. It was decorated with greenery, very beautiful. Candles and ribbons. But yet the central focus that morning was a life-size manger set right in the front. Straw streaming over the edge of that manger. It looked like a great deal of what our Lord may have been placed in that first Christmas morning. As they began to sing the first Christmas carols, tears were trickling down his eyes. Each hymn that they sang, each Christmas song, brought back memories of a happier time. It seemed to be so much better back then. Then his pastor, a gentleman named Ed, stepped into the pulpit. Ed had helped him through some very rough days, some very hard times. And he wondered what Ed would preach about that morning. He thought in his mind, well, he could only say so much about an end that's full or gold and frankincense and myrrh. But yet, his pastor Ed took a different turn that morning. He talked about a time when Jesus was a grown man and spoke in the temple. He read the words of Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Those words struck me. It seemed to him as if there was no one in that sanctuary that morning but he and the pastor. Ed is preaching to me. 
Then he heard, he had asked a very difficult question from the pulpit. Is this a difficult Christmas for you? Are you working hard over circumstances you can't control? Are you in great pain? It seemed like God was sending him a message. The tears streaming down in his face and the moisture wound in his lap. And Ed said, not aloud, but where do you got here? Yes, I am broken heart. And then the pastor came down from the pulpit and he walked down across the aisle to that manger that was there. And he got down on his knees and he said, if this is a hard Christmas for you, I want you to leave all of your troubles and all of your trials in that manger. Because our Lord came to take those from you, to help you bear it, to help you build it. Bill felt like the burden of the weight that was so heavily upon him was lifted. He knew that God had sent his son to care for him. The wounds of that divorce were still fresh, but his heart was clear. His heart was joyful. His burden was lifted. Our scripture this morning talks about a man named Simeon, a man who was dealing with even greater problems. The Lord had not sent a prophet to the land in over 400 years. The land was under the control of Rome. The taxes were oppressive, the leaders even more so. This man Simeon was searching for an answer from God. He had read and he had studied the Old Testament scriptures and Simeon was a man of prayer. And then God spoke to him through the Holy Spirit. A change in God no longer was going to come through prophets. God was going to speak to us individually. And he spoke to Simeon. He told him he wouldn't be left comfortless. We would be given a comforter, the Holy Spirit. Those are the words of our Lord. And he gave him to Simeon that morning. The words of God came and he said the prophet's words will be fulfilled. I will send to you a Messiah. I will send to you the King of Kings. He felt the leading of the Holy Spirit to be in the temple that morning. If you're looking for a chance to get closer to God, being in church, being in the house of the Lord is not a bad place to start. God will speak to you. God will say something through maybe a minister's sermon, a teacher's lesson, beautiful song and choir. God will work. He'll work in your life. And announcing the birth of his son, it was an amazing thing that had taken place just a few days before. God announced the birth of his son, not to kings, not to princes, but the shepherds, shepherds wouldn't even be allowed in the temple. They were unclean, both religiously and physically. They spent their time off in the fields. They had a bad reputation. They fought. They didn't get along well with each other. Let two groups of sheep come together. There's probably going to be a argument and maybe a fight. Shepherds were not allowed to even testify in court. Their word was not considered valid. But who did God choose to announce the birth of his son to? Shepherds. Shepherds who would hear that voice. Shepherds who would be excited. They would run to see what God had told them about. And they would share it with all that they could listen to. We see that the law calls for the sacrifice of a lamb or a goat as you bring a newborn child to do for him after the custom of the law. But if you couldn't afford it, then a pair of doves would be a substitute. That's all Mary and Joseph could afford. But 
child of God, our Lord, was born into poverty. He came that he might relate to all people, not just those of influence, but to all men, all men. It's not unusual that God would show the answers to those who search for their lives. Those who were looking for the answer God gave it to them. That's a message for us. Are we searching? Are we looking for the words of God? Luke describes Simeon as a man who was just in the battle. He tells us about his search for the answer. And there's a message here. If we want God to work in our lives, we would do well to spend time in prayer. We would do well to read the Bible, read the Word of God. We would do well to study and to spend time with God and let Him reveal to us the things that He has for us. You know, you have some people who, when trouble comes into their life, what do they do? They go run and they tell everybody that will listen all the things that are wrong in their life. All the bad things that are happening. If they would start by talking with the Lord, the one who can fix everything, the one who created this world, who has the answer for all of its trials and all of its problems, they would be in a much better place. Simeon went to where he knew the answers came from. He went to God. As Mary and Joseph took Jesus into the temple, Simeon takes him up in his arms and he lifts him up. And he says these wonderful words. He says, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared for the face of all people. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Simeon saw the child and he recognized that this was the salvation that God had spoken. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he would not see death until he had seen this child. As a first century Jew, there's absolutely no way that in the temple he would have prayed for the Gentiles without the leading of the Holy Spirit. But God moved in him to recognize and to record this, that he had seen the Christ that Emmanuel was there. God was with us. The presence of the Lord was here. The child was taken into the temple. The hope of mankind. After Simeon had blessed God for allowing him to see, he blessed Mary and Joseph. And he said some tremendous words. He said, this child is even going to be a stepping stone to God. Or it's going to be a stumbling block to God for his people. You see, Simeon understood what many did. Either we were going to rejoice in Jesus Christ as our Lord, or we're going to reject him. We're going to reject God's plan for our salvation. God didn't make a plan to leave. He said, this is my plan. This is my son that I have given that you may have life and that you may have another. There is no other plan. And those who reject it, reject God. We hate to see it, but the Word tells us that it happens. We need to be the ambassadors for Christ. We need to be the singers of the world. He even come into Mary and a sword would pierce her soul as well. And that prophecy was fulfilled on the day when they nailed her son to a cross. And a spear pierced his side and the water and the blood flew. Yet he is a condemnation to those who will not listen to him. God's plan was that we have something that we couldn't earn on our own. Simeon saw the salvation in the person of Jesus Christ that day. He saw the child Jesus as the fulfillment of the prophecy and the writings of the Old Testament that he knew well. 
He recognized what God had done for his people. And with the power of the Holy Spirit guiding him, he understood that this was great news for all mankind. Those who were outcast were now brought into the family of God. Those who were looked down upon were now brothers and sisters. Those who had <coughs> gone through life uncertain could now know Emmanuel, God with us. God sent his angels to the shepherds who would be amazed. He sent them to the people who would take the great news and share it. We can only pray that it means that much to us as well. That we can accept it. That we can have it. Next we see this wonderful woman named Anna, an elderly woman in her 80s. Extremely old for that day. And like Simeon, she spent her time in the temple praying and fasting and worshiping God. Again, we see God revealing his plan to someone that was looking for him. Someone that was searching for God. If God was looking for someone to reveal his plan to him, would it be you? Would he say, there's that person that's sitting there that's looking for me, looking for my way, looking for the hope that I bring. Are we searching hard enough that God would reveal it to us? Are we so caught up in the world and ourselves that we can't see it? God's promise is that those who search for Him will find Him. The question is, will we find Him? Ourselves searching for God. Anna came to Mary and Joseph and they rejoiced. She knew what God had done through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says she told everyone who was looking for the redemption of Jerusalem, of whom she had seen. Has Christ meant that much to us this Christmas? Have we shared the good news of God? Have we said there is hope in this world? We look at the paper, we look at the news, we see the tragedies, we see the trials, the troubles. Have we shared the good news? Have we been rejoicing in the coming of the Lord? I hope so. I hope this season is a time for you and your family to reflect on the gift that we have that the world so desperately us. I hope that you find the joy of Christmas in the presence of Christ a blessing. And that you, like Adam and Simeon, need to share that with The great joy of the baby from Bethlehem. I hope you find the same. The child they saw that day was the Savior of the world. Emmanuel, God with us. He is still with us today. He's in the story of Christmas. He's in the Word of God. He still reveals himself to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the expectation that they saw in the Lord is the same expectation that we can have and have fulfilled if we're looking for him. I'm not sure how this Christmas season finds you. I hope it's full of joy. And yet we realize that this could be a hard season for many people. In the stable in the back of the crowded inn, our Lord placed in an angel. Angels watched over him. His birth was announced to shepherds. Wise men began their journey from the east to find this king. Whether we were rejoicing or whether we are like Dean Hunter that day, heard him. Emmanuel has come. God is with us. While Christmas is a great joy, it can be a hard time for those who are facing the loss of a loved one a financial situation, a long view of Christmas, the stress and the frantic pace of Christmas. He invites us to come, though, to Him. Regardless of what state we're in, regardless of where our mind leads us, come to Him. Enjoy His peace. He comes to invite us for the first time or to renew our commitment. In all the presence we were
received this Christmas. The greatest gift we have given <coughs> is the presence of our Lord with us. His presence to you, to be with you in a way that fills your, fills your spirit to overflowing and brings peace and joy and life to you. I hope that you have all of that in your life. And I hope you have an opportunity to share that with all you can. Because he comes to be Emmanuel, not only at Christmas, but at every day of our life. God with us. I hope you receive this wonderful gift. I hope you count it as your greatest blessing. May the present that is his presence be with you this Christmas season and for all of next year. These things I pray for you. Let us pray. Almighty God, how you are with us, you may and will. You come, Lord, simply, with no restrictions, we ask and you come. Lord, we just thank you. Our hearts overflow with joy at the peace that you bring, at the hope that comes through you, at faith that is renewed in you. Father, just be with us. May each and every day of this season carry over and may we share it. May we, like the elderly people we read about in the scripture today, be searching for you, searching for your will, searching for your way. And when we find it, Lord, may it be overflowing in our hearts that we can't control, but we have to share. Lord, we are so blessed. We are so lucky to be able to come to your presence without restriction. Many in this world, many in your homeland, your birthplace, fear for their situation. Lord, lift them up this day too. And many other Christians who suffer throughout the world. But Lord, we know that you are with them. Emmanuel, be with us, be with them. Guide us that we may be your people throughout this world. These things we pray in your holy name.